off standing on the front of our mat. Okay. And so let's just bring our, our hands to heart center. Press your shoulder blades back into your spine, which will relieve some tension from your shoulders for those of us that have shoulder, sore shoulders. And then feel rooted and grounded in your feet. And try your practice today to grounding. So many changes in the world and so many, you don't know what to expect one day to another. So let's dedicate our practice to grounding. And maybe during your practice, you can see what grounding sim is symbolized within you, what grounds you. And like in all our practices, we'll use our breath to rinse our bodies and our mind And then just find some stillness, some openness and gratitude. Breathing out everything that feels heavy and in inhaling everything that feels light. Inhaling possibilities and exhaling all the difficult moments we may have experienced during the week that are behind us. Feel your toes grounded into the earth, your heels grounded into the earth. Maybe soften your knees just a little bit so you remove some tension from your knees. Maybe tighten your glutes a little bit. So just feel a little tension in your gluteal muscles. Maybe you have just a little bit of tension to add to your quads, so just to bring you stability. So it's not tension that's bringing you down, but tension that's actually making you feel awake. Start taking deeper breaths, feeling your chest expand. And then inhaling your arms mindfully and slowly up, 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 up high. And we're just gonna move methodically. Spread your fingers wide open and reach out. Tuck your chin into your chest, pull your belly button in. Bring your hands back to heart center. And exhale. So we'll do that again. We just lift our arms, hands spark our fingertips, reaching, receiving, Pulling your belly button in, pulling tight, and then exhaling, bringing your hands back to heart center. Now you're gonna take a bigger inhale as you reach up and a bigger exhale as you come down. Inhale up. Exhale, hands back to heart center. And don't be afraid to use a little bit of force in your breath. It just awakens your body. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, hands to heart center. One more, inhale up, exhale, and then make big circles with your arms, spreading those fingertips, bringing those hands behind you. As you exhale, inhale up. Exhale, big circles. One more inhale up. Reach, reach, pull your belly button in. Exhale, big circle, spread those fingers up wide, good. Bring your hands just lying beside you. Press your shoulder blades back. Inhale your shoulders up, shrug them up. Exhale, big circles as you wind them back. Bring your chest out. Inhale, bringing the shoulders up. Exhale, bringing that chest out and bringing the shoulders down. One more inhale up. Exhale, bringing those down. Inhale, arms to a T, so they're coming out to your side. Your palms are facing down. And then just make circles with your wrists. Just making circles, your arms are up. You're grounded. Good. 
then keeping those arms up, bring those arms in front of you, palms down, okay? And then just flap your wrist. You're just flapping it up and down. And then bring those arms back out to a T, opening your chest. And then bring those hands back into heart center. Inhale one more time up. And then exhale slowly with your back, you know, soften your back, so bending your knees, big bend in your knees, and then fold forward. You can fold onto a block. And I failed to mention, hopefully everyone has a block. And then just let gravity slowly do the work. Okay, and so you're gonna just maybe pedal your legs back and forth, let your head hang, let your gaze be between your knees. Good, and if you need support, the goal here is to keep that back like flat. So if you need to bend your knees and rest your hands on your knees, then do that. So we don't want any tension on our back. Back is flat, so you have your hips kicking back and you're walking it out. Now I'd like you to plant your left arm, left hand, sorry, on, on the floor, big bend in the left leg, and then you open up to the right. So you can be supported on your knee or on the block, and you're just opening up that hip. That's where a lot of our sciatica starts, is in that sacroiliac joint, and reach up, gazes up. You guys look great. Gazes up. You want to be one nice line. Wow, good form, everybody. One nice line, arms and shoulders back. And then fold forward. And then walk that out. Look like how mini, you're walking it out. It's a mini walk out. And as you're walking it out, you're putting, as you, the leg that you're straightening, that hip is going back. So your, your, your sacroiliac joint, which is like a wedge-shaped joint, then you relieve some of that tension in that joint and in that lower back. And plant that right hand down, and then you straighten the left leg, big bend in the right, and open up to the left, gazes up, you're stacked. And then, and don't be afraid to lift, like lift, like pretend like someone's pulling your arm, your hand, and it's gonna lift you up. And so, feel that, like lift yourself up, so you really feel that also that stretch on your left side, and then fold forward. Good. Big bend in your legs, okay, and bring your hands to the mat and then step your feet back. And so you're in plank or you're in modified plank. And then you shift back to your first downward dog. And we're just stretching here. Shorten your dog if your wrist hurts. Soften your knees if you need to. Relax your head. Let your head hang. Press your shoulder blades into one another. Good. And then drop to your knees. And then bring your knees to the outer edge and then take a child's pose on a block, on a pillow, on a blanket, and just shift your weight back. Your head can be on a block. Your head can be on the mat. Your head can be on the pillow. It's whatever is comfortable for you. And hopefully as we do our practice over time, you find that you're just a little bit more, more mobile and just a little bit more open to let go and allow yourself to sink in to the pose. Feeling grounded in your fingertips, feeling grounded in your head, your knees. Your body thanks you. And take an inhale and shift your weight forward and then find yourself in your first tabletop. We're in a neutral position, okay? And then let's just do this in pieces. So inhale your hips back, keeping your neck neutral. Just your hips, so your neck's neutral. And then exhale, pull your belly button in and then come back in. So we'll do that three times. Inhale, hips up, your neck is neutral. Exhale, come in. So we're just, again, bringing mobility to our lower back and our hips. Inhale those, that butt up. Exhale, back to neutral, pulling your belly button in. 
and then inhaling the butt out, belly button in. With your next inhale, just gaze up, keep your hips still, and then come back down. Inhale, gaze up, and then come back down still. We're in a, we're in a neutral position right now. Let your head hang there. Bring your head, keep your, keep your hips the way they are. Just bring your chin to your chest. And then come back to neutral. And just do this slowly. Be gentle with your neck. Chin to your chest. Back to neutral. And then just make some circles with your head. Just slowly. And then change directions. And then come back to neutral. And then put it all together. Inhale, hips and head up. Exhale, push the mat away. Chin to your chest. Round off your back. Inhale up. Exhale. Round off the back. Inhale up. Find yourself back in neutral. Tuck your toes and shift to a downward dog. And then slowly walk your, your feet to your hands. If you're in the front of your mat, you're in a forward fold. Go ahead and take opposite hands, opposite elbows and sway back and forth. Bring your hands to the mat. Soften your knees a lot so your back is safe. Toe heel your feet together so now your, teeth, your feet are close. Your knees are bent, your gaze is down. Rise up for mountain. Inhale, reach. Exhale, hands to heart center. Feeling grounded in our mountain. We're gonna challenge our, how rooted we are. If you don't challenge yourself and you don't develop those roots and then you don't maybe aren't grounded when you need to be grounded. Let's use our practice. I have my eyes closed, my hands to heart center, and then I'm going to hover my right foot over the mat and then drop it. So you're just going to, for an instantaneous, you're just going to balance so our feet are not hip distance apart. We're not, it's not like a standing leg raise, but we're just in a mountain pose. I'm finding stability and then I'm just lifting my left, my right left, my right foot, flexing my right foot and then resting it down. This is just, so now we're gonna to move to the left. Again, grounded in your right foot, eyes closed, hands to heart center, lift the left and then drop it. Inhale, lift the left foot and drop it. And one more time. And drop it. Inhale, reach up. Forward fold. Plant the hands down and just step back into your downward dog. And lift those hips up, shift your weight forward, drop to a tabletop again. Either tuck your toes or, or have your feet on the tops of your feet you, on the mat. We're just gonna move to a bird dog. Again, For find your balance, your grounding. Gaze is down, inhale, right, leg, right arm out. And then lift the left, flex the left foot. Oh, you guys look great. Toes are pointing down. Oh, you guys are strong. And then bring that hand down, knees down. Bird dog on the left, reach that left arm out, right leg back, flexing that right foot. And then come back down. We're back in tabletop just to challenge ourselves just a little bit, okay? Tuck your toes and then float your knees like millimeters above the mat, okay? So now we're floating, our quads are, are activated, our shoulders activated, and then come back down. 
Okay, so it's just a little bit more challenging. And so what I'm gonna ask you to do next is you're gonna float and then we're just gonna do half bird dog. We're just gonna extend one leg, bring it down, and extend the other. Float the knees, extend the right leg, and then bring it back down, come down. Just for a moment, just to feel how grounded we can, we can be on that other side. Float the knees, extend the left leg, and bring it back down. Good. Knees open wide to the edge of the mat. Shift back again to your child's pose. And find your breath. Spread those fingertips. Press that hand onto the mat. Wiggle those hips down. And then slowly walk your hands about a hand's length in, in towards your head. And then lift up. And then thread right arm under left armpit and then rest your head on the right cheek or on the block and then reach out with your left yep. and then slowly rise up and again if you're not don't have a lot of mobility then rest your head on the block so you have some height and then thread the other side And then rise up, bring your hands in front of you again, you're in child's pose, tuck your toes, lift those hips, you're in downward dog. And inhale that right leg up, so you're in three-legged dog. Flex that right foot, square your hips to the mat. So bring your right hip down, because it wants to open up, we're not gonna open up. So you're like doing a standing split sort of. From down on, then bring your your let your foot down, push the mat away, lift those hips, inhale the left leg up, square your hips. So bring your left hip down as you flex your left foot. Good, and then bring it down. Shift your weight back, lift your hips, spread those fingertips, let your head hang. Then we're done. Okay, we're just gonna try something again. If this is too much, just drop to your knees or just do a three-legged dog. We're going to inhale the right leg up, okay? And then we're going to bring that knee to that elbow, shifting our weight forward, and then kicking back again. And then bringing that foot down, pushing that mat away. Then inhaling the left leg up, three-legged dog, you can... Stay here, or you can just bring that knee to the same elbow, shifting your way forward, and then kicking back, dropping the knee. Good. Walk your feet to the front of the mat. Opposite hand, opposite elbow. Sway back and forth. Hands down on the mat. Toe, heel, feet together. Now I want a big bend. Super. I want to see everybody with a big bend in their knees, so you're resting your chest on your knees. So you're almost like sitting down, okay? And then rise up to your chair. And then fold forward. Bring your hands to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Pressing your shoulder blades into your spine. Bringing the crown of your head forward. Bringing your rear end, your bum back, your thighs back. And then drop your hands and either move straight to a downward dog or to a plank for a moment, and then shift the downward dog. Inhale that right leg up, step it in between your hands, and then drop to a low lunge. So both my hands are on the mat. I'm finding my stability here. Everything's at 90 degrees, and I'm in my low lunge. And then open up to the right, And then bring your hands back down. Walk your feet forward. So your knee, the other knee stays, stays back. Shift your weight back. And we're taking a runner's lunge stretch. Christy has a block. 
for support, you can put a block underneath your thigh, your knee. And then shift your weight forward. Bring that knee back down off the mat. You're like in a tabletop. Shift your weight back. You're in downward dog. Inhale that left leg up. And then step it forward. And you're in a low lunge on the left. And we're going to open up to the left. And then bring that hand down, walk that foot forward, shift back into your runner's lunge. Good, and step, shift your weight forward, bring that knee back down, you're in tabletop transition. And you can take a moment here and just catch your breath. You can take a couple cat cows. And then when you catch your breath, you're going to tuck your toes. And then you're going to shift back to downward dog. Good. Inhale that right leg up. Step it forward between the hands. Low lunge again. This time on the right. And rise up to a modified warrior. Gaze is up. Open your chest. And if you need something under your knees, put a blanket, a pillow. And then open up to warrior two. So we're in a modified warrior two. Gazes over our fingers. And then we windmill that hand down. We shift back to downward dog. We walk our feet to the front of the mat slowly. We soft, bring our feet together. We soften our knees quite a bit. And then rise up to chair. And then we fold forward, bringing our hands to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, come down to the mat. You're in plank for a moment, shifting to downward dog. You're inhaling the left leg up, stepping it forward, low lunge. Rise up to your warrior. Your hips are forward, gaze is forward, chest is forward. Fingertips are sparked, pinky fingers in, and then open up to warrior two. And then windmill those hands back down. Shift back into a plank, push back to a downward dog. Walk your feet forward. Soften your knees. Chest on your thighs, rise up the chair. Put the weight on your heels, kick back, lift your toes off the mat, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Bring length to your spine. Your back is straight, it's, you're like a tray. And then plant the hands down, shift back to a plank, into a downward dog. Drop to your knees. And take your child's wings. After a couple breaths here, we're going to rise up to our downward dog and we're going to do the same thing. And you can do a modified vinyasa like we just did, or just do the full vinyasa. Tuck toes, inhale, hips up, downward dog. Inhale, right leg up, step it forward, warrior one, modified, like Christy, or standing, opening up to warrior two, windmilling down, kicking back temporarily to plank, shifting the back, the downward dog. Inhaling, left leg up, stepping forward, warrior one on the left. Squaring your hips, bringing that right hip forward, and then squaring the hips to the side as we open up to warrior two. And then we windmill the hands down. We're in plank, and then we're in downward facing dog. Good. 
walk out your dog. I'm gonna ask you to inhale your right leg up. You're gonna step it forward. So you can either be in a low lunge, okay? Or be in a high lunge. And so you're, I'm rising up from a high lunge. My back leg is straight. I'm bringing that back leg, my thigh towards the ceiling, bringing my heel, back heel up, my weight's forward. And I'm just gonna ask you to do this before we go into warrior three. So we're in lunge or modified lunge, and then shift your weight forward and then fold forward. Almost like you're doing a humble warrior, okay? And if this is hard and challenging, this is all you do, and then rise up, okay? If you can do more, if you can do more, we're in our high lunge. I'm gonna ask you to move your chin and chest forward and then start slowly lifting that back foot and then moving into a warrior three. And then slowly and mindfully come back, get back in your high lunge. Bring your hands down to the mat. Shift back into a plank. Downward dog. And you get to do the left leg. Inhale, left leg up. And then mindfully, slowly step it forward. We're in a high lunge. You get your position in your runner's lunge. And then you rise up. And then we're going to sort of humble that. I'm just moving forward. And this maybe is all you do, rise up. And then now I'm gonna to try to launch forward. I'm gonna bring my hands back behind me as I launch forward and then forward from a warrior three. Warrior three, your hips are squared down towards the ground. Your neck is neutral, arms reaching up. That back leg is up, lifted, back foot is flexed. And then mindfully step back in your high lunge. Bring your hands down to the mat. Shift into your plank. And then into your downward dog. How's everybody feel? Was that too much or is that okay? Okay. This feels okay? A little warmed up a little bit? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Inhale. Okay, good. Inhale, right leg up. Step it forward. You can be in a low lunge. We're actually going to move into warrior one. It's going to be warrior one low or warrior one. Open up to warrior two. Okay. Drop arm to your thigh, open up to a side angle. If you want more challenge, I heard that Christy's teaching binds now. So you can stay here. You can bring both arms out. You can move your upper arm behind your back and just stay here, opening your chest. So when you go into a bind, you're opening up your belly and your chest. Or you can do a full bind where you bring that arm underneath so with a towel. So I know Christy's teaching that. So, so we're using a strap. Use a strap. Okay, so you, everyone's in their extended side angle. Open up to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Shift your weight forward, drop to a triangle. Lift, lift, and then go back to warrior two. Windmill your hands down. You can take a modified plank, plank. Take a couple breaths here, pull your belly button in, push the man away, shift it back, downward dog. Inhale, left leg up, step it forward. We're gonna do warrior one, or you can do a low lunge. And then open up to warrior two. And take an extended side angle on this side and take your version. Whatever feels good, open up to warrior two. Straighten the front leg. Cock your hips forward. 
reach, reach, and then drop and shift, open up the triangle. Gaze is up. Lift, the, lift that side, that right side, lift it up, lift. And then come back to warrior two. Windmill down. Two breaths in plank, or modified plank. And then shift your weight back. Drop your knees, take a child's pose. Catch your breath. And tuck your toes. Downward dog, shift your weight forward. We're in plank or modified plank. And just taking five breaths, slowly come down to the mat, shifting your weight forward, bring your elbows in. Or if you're in modified plank and you're doing that slowly, and just use five breaths to slowly come all the way down. And then rest your chest, your shoulders, and your arms, bring them beside you, your palms facing down. Point your toes towards the back, rest on your chin, close your eyes. And then take a couple breaths. Pretend like you're a mermaid. There's glue, there's cement between your legs, your thighs, your knees, your feet. And we're just gonna lift, keeping our hands down. And you can even use your palms as a little bit of support. Lift those thighs up. Breathe. Breathe, lift and come back down. Again, gluing, cementing your legs together, your feet together, your toes pointed back. And from your hip, sort of from your upper thighs, lift those thighs, keeping those legs straight. Lift, 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 and relax. Bend your legs at the knee, and we'll windshield wipe your legs back and forth. Let's zip it up and cement ourselves again. Bring our legs down. Imagine Gorilla Glue in between your legs, your feet. You're zipped up. This time you're gonna raise those legs and raise those shoulders and take a locus and lift, keeping your neck neutral, lift. Lift just a little bit more. And knees. Good. Bring your hands to the level of your shoulders, and then just lift that for a little baby cobra. Good, and then bring that all back down. And bring your arms now to goalpost arms. So your chin's resting on the mat, your, your chest, your hips, and you're just in goalpost arms. And then open up your arms like you're flying. Lift those arms just a little bit more. And you're back to gold plus arms. Keeping your arms above the mat and the floor. Bring those arms forward like you're now Superman. Lifting those arms. Bring them back to gold plus arms. If it's too much to extend on your shoulders, and just keep your arms at bent, okay? And then you'll basically do everything uh, with your hands closer into your shoulders so you don't feel a lot of tension in your shoulders. Open those arms like you're flying. And then bring them forward. And then bring them back in like old post arms and bring them down to rest. Do a baby cobra, push up again one more time. And then shift your weight back. Find your tabletop. Big circles with your hips. You can go back and forth in different directions. Good. Find yourself back in a neutral position. And then just walk your knees forward just a little bit and then find yourself sitting on your bottom. So we're gonna move to bridge. And bring your feet 
near about hip distance apart, maybe a little wider than your hips. And remember, we're gonna push off from our heels. We're gonna bring our arms by our side. And we'll do a couple variations here and see what you're comfortable with, okay? When we're doing our bridge, we're gonna concentrate on pulling in or what we call mula bandhas, which is sort of your, your, your sphincter tone below and your glutes, you can squeeze them in, you're gonna lift your hips up, okay? So this tends to, um, we don't tend to concentrate on, this is part of your core, or your glutes, your back, what we just did, and then our abdominal muscles. So we're just gonna lift up for a standard bridge and just take a couple breaths. Feeling grounded. So what it feels like to be grounded in a different position. So our positions may change. We may be looking at something differently. We may be, feel like we're in a different place, but we're still grounded. And we come back down. This time we're gonna challenge ourselves a little bit challenge how grounded we're gonna bring our right leg up and foot up so our foot is like in waterfall. So the, your foot is facing its flex and it's facing the ceiling and you're staring at your toes. And then you're gonna lift your hips, even if it's momentarily. Take a couple breaths, pull your glutes in, squeeze, 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 and then release. Do that one more time, inhale up. And then release, bring that foot down. Take a couple breaths here. Ground yourself again. You can do it. You're doing a good job by showing up, being here, caring about yourself, knowing that you need to be strong for yourself and for others. Let's bring that left leg up, flex that left foot. Left heel is being pulled up towards the ceiling. It's almost lifting your hip as that heel gets lifted, your hip gets lifted, and then you rise up for your bridge. Then breathe, a couple breaths here. Good, and then release. Fantastic. This time we're gonna extend, we're gonna extend the right leg. So your left leg stays with the foot near your hips, but now the right leg is extending and you're flexing the right foot. Your palms are facing the mat, your gaze is up, and then this time you're going to lift your hips and then bring that right leg to 90 degrees. So lift, right legs at 90 degrees, take a couple breaths, and then come back down. We'll do that one more time. Lift, leg at 90 degrees, And then we come back down. Take a couple breaths here. Bring that right foot towards your bottom. Extend the right left leg now. That's the other side. And we're gonna lift our hips and that leg will come to 90 degrees. Lift your hips, leg at 90 degrees, lift. Flex that left foot, everything's at 90 degrees. Couple breaths and come back down. Inhale, hips up, 90 degrees. And exhale, back down. Now bring both feet back towards your hips, okay? We'll do a couple standard bridges and then I'm gonna invite you to either put a block in between your knees or just walk your feet together, okay? And you'll feel a little bit more um, wearing your glutes when you do this. So just standard bridge, lift. Inhale as you lift, exhale, come back down. Inhale as you lift, exhale, come back down, and do one more. Inhale as you lift, exhale, come back down. So I invite you to bring a block or bring your feet together. I'm bringing my feet together. I, don't, I can't see what Chris is doing. Maybe she's putting a block or maybe she's just doing a standard bridge. So you have a block in between your knees. We have tension, or I'm gonna create that tension, but just by bringing my legs together and my feet together, and then we're gonna inhale, lift, Squeeze everything, zip everything up, and then come back down. One more inhale, lift. Exhale, come back down. And then bring your legs now just a bit wider than your hips. 
and then windshield wiper those knees. You just gonna go slowly. Windshield wiper in those knees, good. And then come back up to neutral, okay? And squeeze those knees into your chest. Are you feeling like a counter stretch to that locus? And rolling back and forth gently. Good. And every once, bring those feet down. Okay. Christy mentioned to me that she felt bad that she didn't do enough abs in court this week. So sorry. She, she didn't say that to me. So she's always thinking of you guys. She wants to make sure you guys end the week with complete sort of um, exposure, should we say, I guess. Okay. So grab your knees, okay? And why don't we do this? Um, bring your legs to 90 degrees, okay? And you can stay here. This can be all you do, okay? So I'm going to break this down. We've done this before, but we'll, we'll, we'll just break it down. So this could be all you do. This is a good core already. So you can just rest your shoulders, your hands on your chest, or you can cradle your head, either one. And this is all you do. And that, that, is, that is it for you. If you want more, you can extend one leg and keep that other one at 90 degrees, or you can extend both and you're resting back. So whatever, whatever feels good, you can do that. If you want more, we're going to slowly move to more, we, you can just lift your shoulders up. And this is all you can do. And you can bring your, sometimes people like to bring their hands over their belly button so they're like squeezing in those abs. So you can do that, okay. Or those hands can extend back and you're pressing your small of your back. So my legs are at 90 degrees, my arms are back. Or we do the full expression, which is the hollow rock. Okay, so come back, everybody rest. So I want you to find what works for you because um, um, you don't want to have strain in your lower back. You don't want to be, feel defeated. Um, I, I personally would recommend every time I do almost anything, even during the day when I'm walking, I'm always uh, pulling my core in because you have to work your core throughout the day because it's that's what stabilizes everything um, as we're upright is basically our abs, our back muscles, like what we did when we did locus and our glutes. And so if, you, if those are all saggy as we get older, then that's when we get hurt. That's when we're like bent over gardening or working on the car or whatever you're doing. And then you go, oh, whoa, I like that. It's because you have not been conditioning that on a daily routine basis. And then we, we make it all worse because we sit all day. So you're really, you're like a marshmallow down there. You're not really doing anything. So it's like, I mean, what I see the most is people getting hip surgery done, back surgery done, and even knees. But the thing is, is when one thing is weak, the alignment on everything goes. And then that's when you get the, the knees and everything. So your core is actually the most important thing. And then you're actually, you're, of course, your alignment with your core. If you had good core and you had good alignment, probably people wouldn't get hurt. So I, I so think about this as you do it. This is something you can do in, um, you know, throughout the day. Um, if you have a moment, you don't have to be even laying down. You know, you can always pull in your core, pay attention to your your posture. You can always do that, pressing your shoulder blades back. So let's come to 90 degrees with our feet. My feet are flexed at 90. Okay, I'm going to move the full expression. Some people will stay here. I'm going to bring my arms back above my head. My shoulders are still resting on the mat. I'm going to extend one leg, then I'm going to extend the other, and then I'm going to lift my shoulders. And I'm in a hollow rock. And I'm going to take a couple breaths here. I'm going to feel grounded in my body. So I'm being challenged. And then I come back down. I'm keeping my legs up at this 90 degree bend. We'll do that three times, okay? So you can stay here or find your expression. Breathe, press your back into the mat and pull your belly button in, no strain on the back and then come back down. I'm gonna do one more. And then I'm gonna come down. Then I'm going to cradle my head, my, my head with my hands. 
And again, we can, you can stay here. This can be your, this can be off for any, for somebody where you can bring the opposite elbows to opposite knee. Okay. Or you bring opposite elbow to opposite knee as one leg extends, as the opposite leg extends. It's for a bicycle, okay? So everyone find yourself rested. Again, you can just bring your legs up here, and if you need to rest them, rest them, and then come back up, okay? So do what feels good, okay? I'm gonna do the full expression. Christy will do what Christy feels like doing, I guess, okay? So let's just do, um, Terry, how many should we do? Terry, are you still there? Did oh. I lose you? I'm sorry. How many should we do? 10. 10, okay, Terry says 10. So 10 bicycles or 10 breaths. Whatever and <laughs> let's move. One, opposite elbow, opposite knee. Two, we're gonna go mindfully. Three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. And then bring those knees to rest. Bring your feet to touch and one hand over heart, one hand over belly button, and then you're in a Sukta Baddha Konasana. You're opening up your hips, catching your breath. And then bringing your knees together and then squeezing like a ball, peace fingers to toes. You're opening up to a happy baby. Rocking back and forth. And then finding your block, bring your feet down, putting that block just under your lower back and your hips and then bringing your feet up towards the ceiling for a waterfall. So this should be, this should feel like total relief from the lower back, total relief from gravity. This is like the, the opposite of grounding, I think. This is like, you feel like you're floating because your hips are supported, your legs are supported, which they usually do all your grounding for you. And then they're free. They're like flying right now. They see what it feels like. They're, they're, always, they're always there for you. Your feet are there for you. Your legs are there for you. You're going walking, going up the stairs. You're always using them and you're, it's what's keeping you upright. It's what's keeping you mobile. That's what grounds you. And now you're just, you're saying, hey, be free. Thank you. Thank you that I, I have these legs and I've had them all these years. And they've been so, such good. Allowed you to go to places, do things. And then bring those legs down. Bringing your feet towards your bottom, bringing the right foot, crossing it over into figure four. So you're in a reclined pigeon. And you can stay here and just opening up those hips. Flexing that foot, you can thread the needle. And then bringing that foot closer to your chest, opening up that right hip. And then resting that foot back on the mat, switching sides. Yeah. And then releasing. Then extending the left leg out. If you have a strap, use a strap. We'll do a spinal twist. We'll work on the right side first and then the left. Or if you don't, then you can just bring your knee to your chest. Okay. And then just work with your knee. So if you don't have a strap, if you have a strap, put it around the right, your, your foot. 
And then extend that right foot up. And then gently guide that knee towards your nose. And then slowly grabbing that strap with your right hand. I don't have a strap, I'm just grabbing my knee. You're gonna very mindfully and slowly, slowly, slowly open your hips. And again, letting go, because you have tension here. It's just normal to have tension because it's your core that holds you up all the time. You're gonna try to relax as much as you can as you let that leg swing open. Keeping that leg straight, so don't bend the knee. It's more important that you straighten the leg than that you bring that leg up towards your ear. It's just opening your hips and you're opening those hip flexors. And then you're coming back to neutral. You're exchanging hands if you have a strap or your knee and then twist to the other side. Gaze to the opposite side, extend the right arm out. Put your neck gently move towards that right side. And just breathe. Don't forget to breathe. Releasing that tension. And then coming back to center. And then you're going to switch sides. I'm squeezing both knees in. I'm extending my right leg into the mat. And then extend that left leg up. Gently guide that knee towards your nose. And if you have a strap, gently opening up the leg. To the left, just slowly lowering that leg and then releasing all tension. And slowly inhaling that leg back at the center, switching sides. And then a spinal twist on the left. And then bring coming back to center, bringing both the legs down to rest on the mat. Inhaling your arms up for a nice last stretch, pointing your toes down, and then bring your arms beside you, whatever feels comfortable, and find your final resting pose. Inhale your arms up above your head. And then bring your knees towards your chest as you roll towards the right side. Eyes closed. Taking a couple breaths on your right side. And then slowly, eyes closed, find yourself in a seated position the front of your mat. In this time of uncertainty, because there's so much uncertainty, 
I invite you to ask yourself, what grounds you? It is a belief, is it a person? Is it a duty? What grounds you? I had a patient this week who's she's in her late eighties. She has so much energy and I asked her what she, what she thinks about and I never had anybody tell me this, but she said, she has so much energy. She said, well, I wish I had 500 more years because I feel like that's just the amount of time I need to do what I need to do. It's like, wow. She definitely had a lot of positive energy and definitely was grounded. So ask, ask yourself maybe throughout the day, what, what, is, what, is, what is it that grounds you? For some, it's family. For some, it's their faith. It's a belief. Maybe it's a mixture of those, but there's what really grounds you right now. And then offer yourself a symbol of who you are, seeing how you're grounded. The light in me honors the light in you. Namaste. Namaste.